Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Stinky Dragon. This is episode 33.5. It is a Between the Tales episode. You do not get a spooky voice. What about an arrow? <laughs> you get a fun game. Oh. A game? I D&D. Will... <laughs> <laughs> did, did we get Gus, Chris Gus, Gus, again? Chris win the game? <laughs> That's pretty good. Am I guessing the game? <laughs> I'm going to give one player a feat of my choosing. Ooh. If, <laughs> if, if they can accurately and succinctly Ah. Chris, you raised your hand, so Re- go for it. Re- recap. I don't know. Ah. You, the timer go starts ahead. now. You you buzzed in. All right. Well, we started with the, the murder. Of... What, what murder? I gotta give no, 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 no. <laughs> cheat codes. Cheat codes. You put Shoot, that down. Shoots and succinctly. ladders. Succinctly. This is uh, not succinct. Shoots and ladders. Barbara, uh, the murder of, of one of the, you know. 80 seconds. Wolfman. Oh, my goodness. Wolfman. And oh. then we were blamed for the murder. We went on a, a, a try, try to figure out who the murder is. Alchemist broke, helped us break out of jail. We, we went through and we found that Eddie's, like, doing all this bad stuff and blaming seconds. us for the murder. So we went chasing after a- Eddie. And then Eddie was kept framing us for stuff. We were going through trying to get all the lands, you know, go Where'd through. We, we went, to, went to Phoenix. 60 seconds. And then. And then, um, and then we we fought a, 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 a cat phoenix. Uh, hey! Did I say it? Yeah, we went yeah. to Phoenix and, and fought this phoenix. And then and then we, so uh, we 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 did that. And then uh, we've been doing more stuff. Forty uh, seconds. Uh, uh, Barney is um, he thinks he's alive and but he might not be. And then. Uh, uh, the cat's uh, actually not a cat. 30 um, seconds. And then also we just fought a bunch of uh, the the uh, the hags and we beat them. And so we're they're trying to invade Parrish. 20 seconds. And take over more. And we didn't. And we stopped them. And then also we saw Carol and she was a hag. But then she had to, she, she like passed out. <laughs> wow. All right. That with 10 seconds to spare. Welcome to Tales from the Stinky Dragon. What was the actual... I'm going to finish the question now. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, please let it be something completely different. If they can accurately and succinctly recall the previous arc in 90 seconds. Ooh, ooh. I thought I... Blaine had their uh, <laughs> hand did... up first before I Barbara. Mean, technically, he did it about nine. He did. He didn't. He, <laughs> he didn't. Accurately? <laughs> so I would like to see if anybody can do more on the previous arc. Blaine, go for it. Okay, so we're on a train heading to Parish. At one point, uh, Jacques the Cat. He already got something wrong. What? No, we're, we're heading on a train. Parish was one of the places that we ended up because we were chasing after Jacques. 80 seconds. Uh, so we get there. Uh, we get encountered by the Headless Horseman. Uh, and then uh, he thinks that we're bad guys. We're good guys. It's 70 chill. seconds. Uh, we run into Louis the Ice Giant, who is terrorizing the town. We defeat him uh, and then save a lady. And then he... Who's the lady's uh, name? 60 uh, seconds. Uh, 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 Katrina. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Ooh. her and the Headless Horseman have like a little rendezvous because it's Parish. Uh, so we're looking around. Uh, we try to get out of Parish <laughs> into the Hag territory and past them, uh, but in the process, we run into a plot by the Hags uh, to take over Parish. They have somehow Katrina was 40. actually a Hag in disguise, takes over the Headless Horseman's brain, brainwashes him. I think because they have uh, his head in their uh, uh, under their, his control, and that somehow 30. controls the Headless Horseman. Uh, so good. we have to get back into parish. We uh, try to get the caval- cavalry, uh, to, which is like the local police force, to help us stop this hag invasion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we encounter the hags as they're about to come in. There's three hags that are like leading the whole charge. One of them, Shivey, seems like Ten. they're not completely aligned with them. We get into this big battle. Turns out Shivey is actually my wife, Five. Carol, in disguise. Uh, but we're able to stop it, but Shivey gets away. Uh, oh, two. Two. One. One happy new year. Right. Happy new year. <laughs> Barbara, your hand was up after Blaine. Was there anything you felt like he missed or anything you want to elaborate on? Yeah, there's on? a couple things he missed. Mm-hmm. One of them was us stumbling upon the grave of one Barney Farney. Oh, he covered that. Uh, <laughs> where we discovered uh, a Barney has a bit of a tragic backstory and may Maybe. or may not be alive. Um, we also traveled to the uh, Astral Plane. Uh, where we discover a little bit more about Matisse, Australian, Pets, totally Australian. That part. Was, um, where yeah. we learn that Jacques is actually Jack, uh, and then Matisse got a new cat in the making. Named? Named Fifi, Gigi, Gigi, Gigi. Bark, bark. Um, we also bark, bark. Uh, met the, uh, uh, we also hit Barney's dog, 50. Stinker. Um, we also met the uh, 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 Hannah's character, the mummy, mummy, oh. the mummy, <laughs> oh, the mummy who was uh, a ghost in the tavern. Uh, she was kind of drunk. That was cool. 
the Covenord is uh, Covenord mm-hmm. is where the, mm-hmm. the uh, hags all live. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? What else? What else? Talon is mm. what something. The hag. <laughs> 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 no, that's good. Talon uh, something. Twenty seconds. Talon. And then oh. they're controlling the uh, the alchemist. They are, yes. Well, kind of. Well, um, they, yeah. They, oh, Lewis. They're l- using Lewis. Um, has a split personality. Ten. For, for bad. Yeah. Uh, and he has no control over it. Yeah. He's taking potions. Five. I, I wrote four, something that says Ragnar three, has headdress. Two, there's also, uh, one, there's also we find out there's another organization. So Chip used to work for Dagger. Dagger. Uh, Carol worked for Talon. And then there's another one I think called Sheath. Mm. Right. Uh, well, in Chip's vision, we saw... Uh, the hag say something about sheath or she teeth or something like that. But then in the last Me. episode, we oh, heard what they actually said. That's right. Do you feel like they missed anything, John, that you want to, you want to cover? I think they did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did a good job. Sheath. I think they did a very good job. I think they covered a lot of it. I think, yeah, y'all hit pretty much all of the key moments I was looking for here from each of the episodes. Uh, so which feet, feet should I add to my character <laughs> sheet? Probably we each get le- one lucky. We each get one left foot. <laughs> you know, I think nobody really mentioned Juzzy the Darkling who led you through the mausoleum. I know, they missed that. I the traitor! I even wrote Juzzy. Yeah, I don't think anybody mentioned the Dome of Ice in which you had to fight uh, Lewis I initially. You kind of mentioned that a little bit. Uh, no, I didn't. No. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think other than that, you pretty much covered all of it. I will say, I think Barbara hit the most points that I was looking for out of Ooh. out of everyone here. So For this campaign, this arc. Yes. <laughs> Which was the question. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw Chris's arc, up, I, all right, let's go. Yeah, let's he did a pretty for, good job. He did of the overall arc, but for this, for the question for this previous arc, I'm going to say it was Elga. What feat does Elga get? You so you can add this under features and traits. Okay. Feats, manage feats, and then add the feat name Charger. Charger. Oh. Okay. You can use dash and gain a bonus action to melee attack or shove. That's actually really good for you. Yes. Now, is this a 69 charger? Because those are pretty slick feats. <laughs> These days, they're four-door sedans, but back in the day. It would have been cheating if I had tried to get for that because I already have a feat that lets me recall everything with accurate oh, true. Uh, <laughs> recollection. Oh, true. does not need more power. What? I need another pl- I need another boost. Come on. All right, I've added charger. Yay! Great. So it's when you use dash action, you could use a bonus action to make a melee weapon attack or, or shove, shove a creature. Mm-hmm. So it has to be when I use dash, not Correct. anything but else. That's cool, though, because that means you can go far and then still attack, still attack which is yeah. really good for your character. Yeah. Elga what Vonda. dash is usually like? Supercharger. What is it? Double, double your movement? speed. Double yeah. move. So you can okay. double move and then it's still attack. Don't attack. Cool. That's great. I'm coming to get you. And, and sorry, what's the attack? It's an unarmed strike. Melee. Melee attack. A melee. Yeah. Okay. Which, wait, wait, wait. So then she can use her axe then. Yeah. Yes. Heck yeah. Meanwhile, back in Talon HQ. What? What's going on there? Shh, this is lore. Yeah. Shh. Carol very weakly murmurs. Shit. Carol slumps into Chip's arms, unmoving. You look down and see the veins in Carol's face and body have quickly turned a sickly green. Somewhere off in the distance, you hear a familiar high-pitched cackle of Eddie. But suddenly, a purple-skinned crone reappears before you all. Seeing the carnage that lays before her, she shrieks an incantation. All four of you start to feel an intense drowsiness wash over you. The world around you blurs and your eyelids droop. She said everyone go to bed, I think. Yeah, go Mimi's. And go just Mimi's. before you drift off to sleep, you hear a scream of outrage <sighs> followed by a feeling of being cradled. All four of you fall asleep, and you can all, but on the bright side, everyone gets a long rest. Yay! Wow. But my wife! <laughs> you guys are, you're next to each other. You're safe. You're good. It, oh, can I, can I like, am I still cradling Carol when I fall asleep? I think you're being cradled. Well, yeah. that's what, well, I would want to go for the, like, you know. If you, can, you can try. It's like, you know, as you're dozing off, sure, why not? Because I don't know if I'm dying or if I'm going to sleep, so I'm going to, like, do the last thing that feels right, which is hold on to Carol. Oh, that's sweet. Everyone make a perception check. Fine. I can perceive how to kill Eddie because he took my wife. That's an eight <laughs> or five. Twelve. Nineteen. I have an eight. Oh, that's a rare low perception Whoa. check from Elga. Chip and Elga, you start to come to and... You know, regain your consciousness, and you're, it's really hard to notice anything because the, you're laying on some rocky ground that's very uncomfortable. It's hard for you to really look around and focus on anything else. Matid, you stir, and you notice that behind you, you see some dense fog rolling over some hills. Barney, with the highest perception roll of all, 
Maybe you're used to, uh, you got like old man powers. You don't need very much sleep or something. He cleaned his glasses. I slept on the way. <laughs> <laughs> you took a nap earlier. Barney did, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Before you, you see jagged, craggy mountain made of black rock. And you also notice that the alchemist nor Carol seem to be anywhere in sight. I see a mountain and it's just us in the middle of like wilderness. Yeah, you're all on rocky ground. You see some dense fog rolling over some hills and before you is a jagged, craggy mountain made of black rock. Does this look familiar? Like, do I recognize this mountain? Make a, we'll call it a wisdom check. Can I make it as well? Sure, why not? Every, <laughs> eight, nine. <laughs> nope, never seen this mountain before. Wise old souls. Uh, I wasn't going to do it, but now I, now I want to. Be, before the party starts getting up and like perturbing the ground. Pertur- perturbing? What? Perturbing? Are you okay? What happened there? My wife! <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Borat has joined I, I, the... I, I, uh, I want to know what word he was trying. Per, pro, t- perturb? Perturb? Per, 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 Disturb? No. <laughs> Blurble gerbil perturb. Uh, footprints. Do I do I see if like I know my wife's feet size? What size? Seven. <laughs> That's canon. Make an investigation check. <laughs> I think you're yeah perturb. That'll be on our sep- separate wiki page. Stinky feet. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's a net one. Plus four, five, five. Yeah, you cannot seem to find any kinds of uh, tracks or anything or anything uh, in the area. <sighs> I'm very oh. perturbed. By the way, I rolled a nine, so we don't get anything else from oh. this. Can no. I roll a wisdom too? Do it. Yeah. The wisest of us. The wisest. So much wisdom Cheers. packed in that tiny little body. With your sage I'm wisdom. I'm going to be so smart and get a 15. Yay. Nice. Oh, yeah. So you feel like your party members are looking kind of slack-jawed at the mountain. Okay. Like they're not comprehending what they're seeing. You see it for what it is. It's a mountain, but you've just never seen this specific one in the past. You, okay. you, you, you know that confidently. What kind of terrain or, like, weather are we dealing with? Like, are we a snowy there's, kind there's of place? fog somewhere yeah, behind it's, uh, us. Yeah, it's kind of brisk, cold, and foggy. Oh. Okay, but not as something we're familiar with. No. What does the air smell like? So, I, I, I will say, the dense fog rolling over the hills, that seems familiar to you since you roll so high on your wisdom. That does seem like... Parisian? Parisian, reminiscent of the city of Parish. And even though maybe you think you've never seen this mountain, there is something about the black rock composing the mountain that seems familiar to you, Elga. Ooh. Does it, is it like the, is, no, it wouldn't be like seen? the rock from the, uh, the fireplace. No. Okay. Where have we seen black rock before? Uh, it sounds familiar. I've seen it in uh, Warcraft. Did did we ever figure out who... Ha- who Gus didn't he- even hear my wow joke, and he, I just... I I'm, sorry, I'm, re- I'm reading a couple <laughs> of things. I, I, said, I made I, a wow well, reference, okay, and yeah, I need yeah, you to acknowledge. Good, good, thank you. Yeah, you got I was also thinking of Lost, the ship, the Black Rock. Oh, yeah. Did we ever figure out who had who was the other possessor of the Cartus de Aya? Oh, who was, sending you, who was sending you letters? Yeah. Don't know. Do I know? Do I remember? You should have asked Carol. We didn't have much time there, Bernie. Or <laughs> Barney. Sorry. Bernie. <laughs> Bernie. <laughs> Barony. What, Chip, did you lose your wife again? This isn't funny. I think that's a very sensitive <laughs> subject to Chip. That's in, hey, that's in character. <laughs> I, I, like, I said it in character. Like, normally, Chip is very chipper. Oh, he's nice, very, he's, nice. He is not feeling great. Like, he's, like, probably looking around, just checking, like, manically looking for any Have clues. Have you looked in your bum bag? Uh, Honestly, that might be actually a legitimate question. Okay, I look into my bum bag. Because I remember there was there was an exchange of some sort. You remember Carol did put something into your bum bag. That's right. You reach into it, and there is something unexpected in there. You pull it out, and it's a silver pin embossed with a symbol that appears to be a scabbard with an S wrapped around it. Oh, that's that must sheath. be sheath. Yeah. Don't you have a silver locket, Ilga? Yeah. I'm just curious. Silver, I, silver I jewelry. Did. Should I look at my locket? No, no. It was just a silver jewelry. Maybe think about it. Chip, look, we match now. What's in what? What is that locket? This locket? Yeah. Oh, uh, some pictures. Hmm. Isn't it your sister? It's my sister. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Is there anything to? Th- no, no, no. It's, I, 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 it just triggered a mind. It's just, okay. it's it's just, it's just me. It's, it's just, just check off silver locket button thing. Could I look at my locket just in case? Yeah, it's, it's just how you remember. It's fine. Carol pops out. <laughs> it's a picture of Carol. <laughs> Wait um, a minute. Carol is my sister. What? What's like? What's our distance to this mountain? Is it like, are we at the base of it? Is it like in the distance? 
Yeah, you're uh, kind of at the base of it. I'll tell you what, make me a survival check for me, uh, Matita. Oh, no, I always fail these. You should probably also investigate what this locket is, this silver thing. <gasps> yeah, 21. Oh, nice. I will survive. You are at the base of this mountain, and, you know, as you're looking around, trying to figure out where you are in relation to it, you actually see there's a trail leading up the mountain, and there's a pair of drag marks leading up the trail. Oh, is there a drag marks? Drag? As in, like, someone was dragged? Yeah, as in, like, presumably, like, two bodies have been dragged. Oh, uh, like, oh. okay. Could be, could be Carol, could be Alchemist. Okay, well, before I do that, what do I know of Sheath? Is this an organization that's even more, like, top secret than Dagger and... You have not heard of the organization Sheath in the past. Is there anything else, any other information that could be gleaned from this pendant? mm Your only experience with Sheath so far has been Carol mentioning it and then, I guess, this pendant or this pin? And also that vision Chip had, right? Of mm. the hag, like, on the ground. All, wasn't she, like, all, like, beat up going, like, she... Like, you were trying mm-hmm. to read her lips mm-hmm. and she was saying, like, she tea. Was that Shivy in that vision? I think it was. Maybe you've seen this logo on the pin before? Uh, but... It's it's something you you haven't paid attention to or doesn't like really stick out in your mind. Maybe you've se- you've seen the logo written somewhere. I don't know. Hey gang, I got a gift from my wife in our very short amount of time together. How do you know it's from your wife? What? How do you know it's from your wife? Well, because uh, okay, so to catch you up, when the middle of that battle, whenever I went up to break Shivy out of the uh, prison that she was in, they they revealed to me that that was that was Carol in disguise. Oh, and, and if she's I know, alive? She's alive. And if I, I didn't kill my wife, okay. first and foremost. No, we, we, we don't know that And yet. no one else saw we, her except we, for we you. Have, yeah, we have not seen. <laughs> sure, uh, yeah, Chip, yet. you didn't kill so. your wife and that was definitely no, no, her. Yeah, not saying that you did. It's just that we do not know yet. I'm trying to be as friendly <laughs> as I can. I'm going through a lot emotionally right now, gang. So if you could just like cool it. <laughs> <laughs> but did she, you said she gave you this little pin? Yeah, so, you know, I know my wife. I know that she's a good person. So whoever this sheath organization is, I believe that they have her, you know, on some sort of an assignment to infiltrate the Coven Nord. Or maybe they've stolen her. I don't know. They're not mutually exclusive. (laughs) <laughs> Great insight from Barney that is there. Very astute, yeah. Barney. I appreciate your input oh, Bar- so much. Barney just showed up, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Barney worked for corporate America for many years. Knows you could be working for someone and a slave to the corporation. Uh, per- sh- perhaps we should investigate these uh, uh, tracks that I found. We yeah. should, but before we do, does anybody recognize this S, this this sheath symbol? Does anybody? I, I need help. I need to know if anyone I'll sees this. Take a look. Yeah, if anyone who wants to look at it can make a wisdom check. I miss rolling with MUDs, wisdom modifiers. Nine. I have good wisdom. But Fourteen. Uh, Fifteen for Elga. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Very wise, Elga. Barney, you've had bad wisdom checks today. I know. You have a plus five modifier. Um, no, the... the <laughs> Just to make just to make Chris feel worse about it. I'm just saying. I expect the, him to normally roll he really good on good these. Wisdom, yeah. yeah. No, the the symbol does not seem like at all familiar to anybody else. Okay. I've never seen the letter S before. <laughs> but you know what it is. Elga von Brass has no S in it. <laughs> Gang, I, I think we should go follow these marks then. Oh, oh, and Chip puts his hood on. That means that Chip's in his like anti-hero face. <laughs> Oh, right. I like how Blaine points like Blaine. excuse me. Blaine did a little tip of his head and finger pointing. <laughs> Things, Chip, hey, the Chip you knew, he's he's away right now for business. All right, you're getting serious, Chip. Oh, I am. I am so. Uh, t- Don't mock me, Matthew. <laughs> I'll kill you. Too late. Minnesota Chip just showed up. <laughs> you got me there. Wisconsin Chip's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chip you knew and loved, he's out. He's gone on vacation. <laughs> yeah. Now that you say that, because I want this Chip to have like a like a Brooklyn accent or something. <laughs> he's just totally hey, different. What? I'm walking here. It's Chip. Hey, yeah. me. Someone really chipped him off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey. I, I've, uh, Mati walks uh, along the tracks. Me too. As do I. Yeah. Barney, I'll do go. you want to come? I will come. And what with that? the. <laughs> uh, that was me saying Barney will come. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> we'll but El- Elga addressed you and you answered in Chris. Uh, is Chris here? Yes. Wait, but we Gus, don't speak I'd like Chris. to see if Chris is in this place with us. <laughs> Make a <laughs> investigation check. <laughs> is the Chris in the room? <laughs> Ten. 
<laughs> you think there may be a crystal <laughs> in the room with you. I think someone is in this realm with us. We do not know be uh, before. Can, can, while we them. walk, can, can, can Barney go up to Chip? Sure. And be like, I, I just want you to know I, I, it's really brave of you to go after her. To, to go after her. I, it can be scary to, to go off. Uh, I, just, I, I, I just look... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Blaine, processing. I'm processing. No, Blaine was like bracing for you to take another jab no. at him, and so your no. your sincerity I, has I, caught him off guard. I I have had a, just family missing for a long time, and it, it's it, it the idea. It's not always easy to to go searching. It, it seems like it would be. Chip rests a hand on Barney's shoulder and says, "I I appreciate that, Barn. We're we're gonna figure this out and." By golly, we're gonna we're gonna find out and get to the bottom of your mystery too. Are I'll... you guys crying? <laughs> Elga? Are you guys getting emotional? Elga, we are having a moment. Okay, sorry. Now you got Stinker to help you track stuff down. He's a he's a, he's a full blooded uh, bone hound. No, Elga, bo no bone. Do you have a sad mystery that you would also like to like, you know? Elga doesn't feel emotions <laughs> anymore. Why does you look like you're crying right now? It's the fog. <laughs> It's precipitation. It's precipitate. It's crying on my face, the rain. <laughs> I think Mike, Micah pointed out that I think Elga does still have one emotion. Rage. 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 Yeah. Elga smash. The most important emotion. Hey, little stinkers, it's John here. I wanted to give you your own little update on what's going on in the stinky world in February. February, we got a Discord event coming up just for our first members, which will be on February 20th at 4 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to be ranking all of the Stinky Dragon NPCs along with the first members in the chat, and we're going to have an exhaustive list of NPCs. And if you're not there, you don't get to have an opinion on how we rank them. It can only be there if you're a first member. So if you want to support the show directly, you should consider becoming a first member. There are patrons and you can find out how to become that at stinkydragonpod.com slash first. And our first members, they support us and they allow us to create more great content that they get access to like bonus episodes of our weekly dungeon mister player deep dive BTS show which is called Second Wind. Um, we also have Show Me the Magic, which is an exclusive show on how Stinky Dragon Adventures, our awesome puppet show, was made. They get ad-free episodes at stinkydragonpod.com and an ad-free podcast feed, including all of our bonus content available at Blaine's favorite URL, stinkydragonpod.com slash RSS. And they also get, like I said, monthly subscriber events like live streams, Discord events, and even exclusive merch on occasion. That's pretty cool. Speaking of merch, coming out next week on February 16th during the lovingness this month of the year. That's a word. Bartholomew, Bartholomew, Barth <laughs> I can't say his name. Bartholomew Finn's tour shirt. It's coming out. It's Barb's character from Infinite. He's got his own shirt and it's awesome. It looks like a band tour shirt. And if you want all the shirts, you got to remember we also have Gum Gum's cool flower power shirt in the store and a neat little dice tray that you can roll dice in or maybe feed a pet out of. I'm pretty sure it could hold kibble. Speaking of kibble, I don't have a segue for this. We're on social media and Discord. You can find us at Discord at bit.ly slash stinky discord and join us there. Or if you like the socials, we're at stinky dragon pod on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Even threads. We're on threads, you all. Or we're on, we're on Reddit. We're, and my voice is really high right now. You can go to r slash stinky dragon podcast to find us there. This episode of Sneaky Dragon was brought to you by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, or stress less, and I'm I'm really trying to do all those, but especially the last one, HelloFresh is here to help you and me do all three. So say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door guys no more staring at your like fridge wondering what, what am i gonna make for dinner just let hellofresh take over and try and dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 recipes to choose from each week that's right you could eat it every single day for a month and still not get through the whole menu unless you ate it twice a day for half the month that's how math works hellofresh is fantastic i've used it a ton it's wonderful that it's all just comes to your doorstep and there is no like leftover like ingredients you don't have to like figure out if you miss something and the instructions are all there i like to take away the brain power 
stuff out of cooking so I can just enjoy a Zen moment and then a nice meal afterwards. If you like that and you want to join me, go to HelloFresh.com slash Dragon Free and use code Dragon Free, one word, for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Dragon Free with code Dragon Free. This episode of Stinky Dragon is brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies has it all, from all black classics to fun, expressive prints. MeUndies has a look for everyone. Try their new V-Day prints like electric hearts or lovebirds. Plus, they come in sizes extra small to 4XL, guaranteeing a flattering cut for everybody. And MeUndies isn't just about underwear. Explore their lounge collection featuring joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. I have their joggers. They're super comfortable, and I'd like 10 pairs of them, please. Me Undies signature fabric is as soft as a warm hug from your favorite sweater. It's breathable, stretchy, and oh so comfy, making it ideal for all day wear, which is usually how long I wear my underwear. They use sustainably sourced materials and work with partners that care for their workers. If you're not happy with your first pair of MeUndies, it's on MeUndies. This Valentine's Day, good things come in big packages at MeUndies. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash dragon. That's MeUndies.com slash dragon for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. This episode is also brought to you by DraftKings. Looking for a super offer for the Super Bowl 58? DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn five bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. All you need to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code STINKY. New customers can bet five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code STINKY. The crown is yours. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus ages vary by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming sources. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code stinky bernie let's get a move on bud yeah we, let's go we got to get to the bottom of this or the top of it because we're going to the mountain you're right <laughs> what's y'all's marching order i'll be in front i'll be second i was gonna say i was gonna be in front because yeah, <laughs> it's my wife <laughs> dude should we roll off to see who's in front yeah yeah let's okay, do it let's, let's see go. who can power rock faster let's just roll a d6 let's just do it yes very good no modifiers I'm a one. What does that mean, last or first? I assume that's last. Three. Five. Two. <laughs> so so Barney first. Mean? I didn't know Barney was, was that's mine fine. first. <laughs> I don't want to go first. Barney's so first. Give Barney, me your dice. Barney, Mateen, okay. Chip, Elga. This seems like a great marching yep. order, I just want to say. Why are we going so slow? And nobody got what they wanted. <laughs> that's what compromise means. Barney, Mateen, <laughs> Chip, Elga. <laughs> Barney can go fast. Chip's further back than he was <laughs> intending. I'm not in the front. <laughs> You got the old, the old man on the walker <laughs> leading the way. Well, why don't we just swap Chip and Barney? So it'll be Chip, Mateed, Barney, Elga. Only if Chip and Barney are okay with that. No, I'm I was okay. trying to get ahead of Chip. Okay. <laughs> so on a serious note, I'm trying to do something with the character. Okay. So I wouldn't mind leading because this is, you know, like I'm getting to the point of my mission. Chip, would you like to lead the group? I would love that. that oh, then all you have to do is ask. That's all I had to do? <laughs> That's all you had to do. I mean, why, why would I fight you for walking in the front of this place? I mean, what if something were to come and try to kill us? Oh, gee whiz. I, I didn't think of that. <laughs> By all means, you may shield me like the friend you are. After you, Chip. <laughs> so is it Chip, Barney, Mateed, Elga? Let's say yes to move on. Yes. Okay. Strategically speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. Oh, I hate you guys. Chip, make me an investigation check. <laughs> I'm glad I led. Oh, uh, that's a 11. It's not bad. As you're walking up the trail leading the party, you come across a trail of scarlet droplets leading up to a small red puddle in the middle of some large jagged rocks. 
Uh, look, Elga, a snack. Hey, Elga. Yeah. I think that this uh, falls under your purview. Rocks. <laughs> Blood. <laughs> Blood. Oh, wait. Why would you? Why did you think that? No, might... no, no reason. I'll still check it out though. Just you know to you make sure those, we're all uh, safe. You have those special glasses. We just thought that yeah, you'd well, be very good for it. Yeah, let me go take a look. Actually, if you don't mind, she sticks her head in. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll also investigate. Like into the puddle? Not in. Like <laughs> like up close to the puddle. <laughs> Could I do a little like? I take a little dip, dip, lick, lick. Yeah, you get uh, you get down real close to the puddle. And the puddle tastes familiar. Oh, that was not a word I thought you were going to say. Are you are you a positive? A positive? <laughs> it's a it's a it's a vintage you you've had experience with in the past. Are you saying it's blood? Who has Elga drank from? Is it, it's not the hemoglobin is goblin is it? As you taste it and think about it, the blood congeals and forms itself into a blood method oh! that strikes out at you, Elga. Okay, not cool. It hits AC. <laughs> that's like that's like if Chris was attacked by ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just his greatest love betraying him. It's AC 20. Yeah, that hits. The blood forms into two blood methods, actually. Oh, no! And one of them lashes out at you while you're not expecting it, Elga, and hits you doing two points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, no. Each or, like, two total? Two total. Do you, okay. do you have like a new thing that you use? Like mm-hmm. cool new power or anything? I'm not currently raging, so it's not like I take half damage or anything like that. No, like your level up stuff. Oh. Because we leveled up. That's a good segue. This is a Between the Tales episode, so that means everyone is now level seven. Even though it's we call them Between the Tales, but these episodes are part of the lore of yeah. the story, yeah. so yeah. people should be listening to them. I think during the Infinite campaign, it was very much de- you know detached from the story. Yeah. I think we're trying to incorporate a little more story now. It's fun. We get to do role play and and make chip cry. Uh, what do you want or to do? Blank I'll, cry. I'll, I'll give you a, a reaction here <laughs> since uh, you're the one who got attacked. Yeah. How close are they to me? Like they must be right up on me because they just hit right. Yeah. One of them is right up on you, attacking you. The other one is like booking it super fast away from y'all. Oh really? Well, is it more than sixty feet away from me yet? No, but it is flying. FYI. Could I throw my axe of the scarab at it? Yeah. Is that the one you can recall? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a boomerang. Neat. Okay, boomerang. Okay, (laughs) boomerang. 18, does that hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, That does eight points of damage on it. It explodes into a a puddle of blood that falls back down to the ground. The great rock band. Elga sticks open her mouth and just goes, (laughs) ah. (laughs) And then I don't think it costs me any sort of action or bonus action to recall the axe. I believe you are correct. So I want to use the same axe to hit this one close up on me. Do you have to do anything cool to recall it? Uh... I just, I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> that was better than I could imagine. <laughs> the the shoulder shrug after... <laughs> it, uh, it specifically says as part of your attack you can make the axe fly back to your empty hand. So it's not like okay. it's, its own action or a bonus action. It's just part of the That's attack. What, no, but what Barbara did is what I wanted. Yeah, no, no. That Canonically, yes. The, the <laughs> evil must happen every time. Can it do a thing where like it hits the thing on the way back to you? Or is that a double attack? No, probably not. Yeah, I mean, you, if you want to incorporate it as like an attack roll, you can try that. Like God I'll, of War I'll just style. catch it and then okay. hit the one in front of me. Yeah, do Go it. Go for it. Pa-ching. Nice. 26. 26 that. Believe it or not, that hits. Good I'm hit. Shocking. And that, ooh, only seven points of damage on that. That's exactly what you need. Yay! This uh, blood method also screams and disintegrates back into a, a puddle of blood in front of you. Wait, when we encountered the blood methods out in uh, Karkasuk, yeah? Yeah. I love the way Chip says Karkasuk. 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 So, y'all been out there to Karkasuk yet? These probably aren't native to this land. How? Who that was... is weird that we were seeing these in what we think may be parish. Yeah. I wonder how they got there. Anyways, I'm going to just uh, Man, I wish I could take a little how... sip of this, if you don't mind. You're going to clean it up. You don't want anyone slipping yeah, on just, it. Yeah, could I do it's some... All, you got, it exploded in your face, so it's all over it. You, uh, you have a little bit right there, okay, if you want to oh, get it. Okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, well, uh, okay, I'll clean. I have a question for the party. Does anybody remember how that hemoglobin encounter ended didn't we did we freeze it i think we destroyed it and then inside of it was uh the the captain weezer i think i think it gave kind of like one of those like i'll get you kind of speeches before it like claw from inspector gadget yeah i think that something like that happened like it was still alive that's what i thought i just can remember i can remember the specifics of how it 
retreated? Well, I'm or? just trying to remember the alliances. Who is it like aligned with? Because if this is like an Eddie troop, I don't know. Then there could be like a, you know, this could be a real Snake Mountain Skeletor situation. We're going to the headquarters. Hmm. Yeah. Elga, are you all right? I'm so good. If you see any more of those blood things hanging around, just let me know. I will do that right away. You'll take care of it, right? Could I also uh, put some of it in my sippy cup? Sure, why not? Okay. I dunk my sippy cup in and... You know, for the road. Yes. <laughs> for, for the road. <laughs> for investigative well, reasons. Well, you know, you, they say that you could, you know, blood... Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your wife, Jim? <laughs> oh. uh, I, uh, who was in front? Uh, Barney. Chip. No, Chip. Oh, Chip wait, was no. in front. <laughs> Chip, Barney. would you like to proceed on the path? Let's get boogie in. Or would you like to me, me to take the front? No, no, no. Okay, okay. I just wanted to check. My wife. Okay. All right. Yeah, you, uh. <laughs> just mumbling that under my breath. You continue your trek up the mountainside. Why don't you make me another investigation check, Chip? Oh, you know I'm going to succeed on this one. Here we go. I mean, succeed's relative, right? 16. Oh, that's really good. As you are walking up, you discover a small cave in the side of the mountain, and there are drag marks on the ground leading inside. And you feel like every now and then you hear a scream coming out from inside the cave. I silently pause the party, and then I... Ask Barney, don't you get some sort of dark vision thing? I do. Let's uh, let's boot that up. Let's, okay. We we're, were gonna have to, you know, go in there. <laughs> and then it, it shoots off. Uh, it does. It uh, shoots off. Eyes of night. You have a dark vision out to range of 300 feet. As an action, you can share this dark vision with up to five willing creatures you can see within 10 feet of you. It lasts for one hour. Who are you sharing it with? I'm sharing it with the party and 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 I guess Stinker. Yeah. Ooh, I, yeah. say. <laughs> I don't want him to get lost. We can yeah. throw the bone real far and he'll go get it. It scares Stinker. He closes his eyes. Oh. Uh, he does that thing where he closes his <laughs> eyes and just starts shaking a little bit. Oh. Oh. He's a chihuahua. Oh. Got it. Your dark vision activates so you can see pretty well into the cave. And since you can see all the way into the cave, you see that the drag marks end in a mountain goat being held down to the ground and fed on by two giant bats. Oh. Wait. Bats? Yeah, two giant bats are currently sucking the blood of a mountain goat that they've trapped inside the cave. Oh. I'll attack the bats. Yeah. I'm conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're attacking the bats? Yeah. Yeah, get away from that poor mountain goat. Could I see the if bats I... Bats have to eat. Could I communicate with the bats? Can you? I mean, I have echolocation. I have keen hearing. I may have something else. What you got? I don't know Spill if I should... the beans. I don't know if I should say yet. Spill the beans. Because I don't know if Elga's discovered it yet. Mm-hmm. It's up to you. It's uh, it's it's how you come across come across these things. Okay, uh, guys, before we attack anything, you know, I think bats are just a little bit maybe misunderstood creatures. Do you mind if I give something a try? Hey, go for it. I've go been, nuts. I've been working on this. I do prefer things that fly over the ground ones. Okay. Well, I want to protect a baby goat. I'm focusing. No one said baby. No one's a baby. Well, everything's a baby in chip size. <laughs> Including Elga? You're mm. the babiest baby, Elga. Okay. What about me? <laughs> you are the ugliest baby. <laughs> <laughs> there are some babies that look like old men. That's true. Okay, I can need to focus. Okay. Bet. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. With that, Elga very quickly transforms what? into a um, into a bat. Whoa! Oh my God! This very normal little girl turned into a bat chip. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, I think I think this little girl's become a little woman. <laughs> Last time I'll do that, I promise. <laughs> What's that? Streaking and clicking yes! for both of you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy. Uh, yeah, you are now uh, flying around the party. I'm just imagining bat body, Elga head. <laughs> <laughs> what do we hear? Yeah, you can understand her. Wow. What size is bat Elga? Bat Elga is not giant bat size, just like a a more average bat size. Mm. Oh, so just like, so like a, still like a fruit bat. Oh, oh that's fruit like, bat. like six inches. Yeah. Not and the too big. the bats that are eating on the goat. Those are giant bats. In D&D &D terms, they are large. Mud turned into giant bat okay. to carry the... Uh, the, uh, the, the Hemmobile. The Hemmobile yeah. in campaign one, that's true. Um, am I able to communicate with them? Yeah. Oh, dang. Hello, um, my fellow bats. It is me, also a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. 
<laughs> that's, my how, that's how I approach anybody new. <laughs> Hello, fellow humans. It is I, also a also human. A human. <laughs> Do you see my wings and how I fly? Bats. Very yeah. cool. <laughs> she turns back into Elga when she says that. <laughs> no, <you're> not saying that. <laughs> no, she didn't say Elga. Yeah, exactly. I'm just wondering what the you uh, fine people, uh, fine bat people are doing over here. Is this ghost? Uh, was he evil or what's going on? What's your persuasion modifier? <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> <not great. laughs> mm, feeding. Oh. Feeding. Oh, very cool. Um. Little bat join. Guys, I don't know what to do. Do I look cool to my fellow bats? Did we figure out if we can understand her? We do. You yeah. Do. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear your answer. So they don't know what the giant bats have said. Only you know that. Okay. Elga. So Elga says, I think they're having a meal. Try to lure them away from the goat. We, you know. But what? I mean, circle of life, you know? Yeah, but the goat, you know, might, I don't know, could be a shapeshifter of some sort. <laughs> Is there anything <laughs> that I could are? tell us like special about this goat? It's a really good screamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like still alive. Yeah, that's the screams that you all heard from inside the, uh, you the, know, the cave. Um, this goat sure does look tasty, but I, I have to tell you guys, just outside the cave, we actually found a whole puddle of blood that you don't even have to like chew to get to. You know, you just have to go sippy sippy and it's right there. Mm. That's, a, that's a pretty good argument. You know? Make, I'll tell you what, make an animal handling check with advantage. A seven and then a th- or a three and then a seven. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my inspiration die. Ooh. Because I really want to persuade. Yes, Nat twenty. Nice. Ooh. Free blood. Free blood. Yeah. Not that they have to pay for it normally. <laughs> Free uh. of being inside the creature. <laughs> they take to the air and fly out of the cave, leaving the goat. Okay, guys, I think the co- the, the coast is clear and the g- ghost is clear. <laughs> Elga. <laughs> 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 Elga trans- retransforms from a bat back to uh, the Elga we all know. And I probably fall down onto the ground. <laughs> in the air. That is so fascinating. Uh, Chip, what can you turn into? A uh, 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 fire resistant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and the that goat. That's the first time I've heard that. That's very interesting. The Chip. goat bounds out of the cave and begins running up the mountain. You remember this, yes? <laughs> That goat's gonna save our lives someday. <laughs> Can't wait for the finale. As Eddie is about to bring <laughs> down his ass, campaign. you hear no. a scream from on high. Man. Man. It was the god of goats that we didn't know was there. It could be a druid. Who knows? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds, sounds like John's been reading Greek mythology over here. There's a lot of goats in Greek mythology. <laughs> well, is there anything else further in this cave, or should we go back out? To the no, trail? that's pretty much it for this cave. Okay. You you uh, kind of sidestepped a lot of it with your infernal night vision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Matida uh, does a, a nice little uh, head bow and lets uh, Chip go ahead. Okie dokie, gang, back on the trail. Here we go. And then I start heading back up. Everyone else is imagining like Chip doing that little like power walk kind of thing, like the shuffling. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, hips. yeah. The well, glutes hips. are activated for sure. <laughs> does anyone think we should get Chip longer shorts? <laughs> <laughs> my engine seam is perfect. It shows off my meaty legs, but it's also conservative enough that it's not inappropriate. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, he, Blaine looks like he's power walking in his seat. Yep. Chip, make me another investigation check since you're leading the party here. Okay. Here's the good one. 17. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is a good one. That's your best one so far, I think. It is. It's because I said so. Yeah. John, John allowed it to happen. Mm. Yeah. As you're walking up the trail, you make a turn in the path and you stumble upon a fellow traveler sitting on the trail. It appears to be a silver haired dwarf wincing as she rubs her ankle. Oh, hey there, friendo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Oh, God. Oh, you scared me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a rogue. I'm kind of used to sneaking up on people, but I have no reason to kill you, friend. What are you doing here? Well, we are searching for my wife, Carol. She's beautiful. I can tell you all about Carol. Uh, one time we were out at the theater, and, uh, wow, she, I, just, I just didn't pay attention to the play on stage because I was looking at my beautiful wife. That's beautiful, Chip. That's so beautiful. And she's just the loveliest person you ever... Anyways, uh... What play was it? Uh, the... Uh, uh, give me a... Come on, you're... Phantom of the Coffra. Nice. Terrible. That's actually good, because we have coughs in there. It was rats. (laughs) Oh, rats, rats. (laughs) Oh, was it uh, the musical rats? Yeah. Yeah, rats. It could have been bad. Was Taylor Swift in that one? (laughs) 
Uh, anywho, we're looking for my missing wife and our friend, uh, the alchemist, who may also be an ice giant named Lewis. That was a very unconfusing way to tell me what we're doing. I'm, I'm pretty confused, and I know what's going on. Uh, is everything okay? What's wrong? You seem to be in a little bit of pain here. She's kind of like rubbing her ankle and wincing. Uh, and you can see that she uh, she has, it looks like she has an injury on her ankle. Mm, I was attacked by some red viscous creature that tried to drag me away. Oh. Was it made of blood? Maybe, but blood shouldn't move around. Where were you going? I'm mountaineering. Mountaineering just for fun? Yeah, looking for treasure. Oh. Looking for uh, precious metals. There are a lot out here? Well, it's a mountain. Okay. The name's Charlie. Charlie Graves. What's yours? I'm Barney Farney. Nice to meet you. What happened to your ankle? It's all hurt? Well, yeah, I was attacked. The, the, I got the red creature tried to drag me away by the ankle. And mm. did you say that what kind of creature was Charlie? Silver-haired female dwarf. Charlie Grace. Yeah. Cool. Well, Charlie, maybe we can, uh, you know, help you out. Has anybody got any heels? I can help. Ch- Chip Haney, by the way. Plus for me. Do you know oh, what, the, you. what the blood method is? No, what's that? It might have been the creature that was taking you away. Was it, it was flying? Yeah, like a, like a b- creature made of... I guess blood like that can move around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Elga it had wings like, uh, oh, what is it called? You know those flying things? Mm-hmm. What are they called? Oh, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, what, what's the name of them? A bat. <laughs> just just a bat. Well, she has to, <laughs> it's time where she says bat. She has to willingly want that. to <laughs> yeah. turn into a bat. Otherwise, you don't know if, like, if she's watching a baseball game. Like, oh, yeah. broken bat, single. Uh, Boom. <laughs> I could also only do it, I think, once per long rest. Mm. Right? Oh, I can fly all the time. Yeah, it's once per long rest. <laughs> That's nice, my dude. Blake looking at me. <laughs> so should I check that off since I did yes. it? Okay. And Barney, were you going to ch- yeah. uh, try to assist well, Charlie? Does yeah. Does Barney have a, a, it- a new way of doing this? No. <laughs> nope. Just the Not same really. old ways. Yeah, I, I can do it stronger. Oh. But that same old. I have a disabuse spells. Dis- oh. Disabuse spells? Yep, that's what he's going to do. Some new spells. I'm not going to use them because they're not really, I don't know. If Why don't you just fire one off for fun? Yeah. What happens? What well, you- I'm sure we will rest before the next time we really need to be using our ability. So maybe let's just see what it looks like. I love magic. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do, Chris? Well, I, I mean, I have two new spells that are fourth level spells. They're Aura of Life. What's that do? 30-foot radius of life-preserving energy, and it basically, everyone has resistance to necrotic damage, and its hit point maximum can't be reduced. So it's like a, a buff, yeah, like an aura. And, That's a buff. And then if you, a non-hostile living creature just regain one hit points when it starts to turn in the area and has zero hit points. So it, kinda, oh, okay. it, it can bring people back to that. And then I also have invi- greater invisibility. Did you have lesser invisibility at some I point? I don't know. Okay, no, I just didn't care. But now I do. I have greater vi- invisibility. We're going to lose our old man. Why? Because you're going to turn invisible, and then we're just going to lose you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> <Can't find me. laughs> but I can also cast my other spells at, at fourth level now. Oh, you got fourth nice. level spell slots yeah, I got now. A four, yeah. Well, nice. what are you going to do to heal this person? I'm going to do a third level of... I like when Chris stays in Barney voice while he talks meta. I'm going to. <laughs> I mean, I could do uh, lesser restoration. Cool. But, oh, well, no, no, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my healing? healing? I'm keep sorry, the, Gus. Listen, it's a lot of spells to keep track of. You've been looking at your computer this whole I know. recording. <laughs> this is his method, everybody. Yeah. Okay, yeah. his method. As as a cleric in Baldur's Gate, it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. A lot. And then it's you can so you change much. them out during. So they're always different. Note to self: Don't play cleric next campaign. Yeah, right. <laughs> Clerics are so OP. I think. I think they're they're really? like a really they're, powerful. They're very good. Yeah. Yeah. complicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to cast. I guess Aura of Vitality, healing energy radiates within 30-foot radius until the spell ends. The aura moves with you, center on you. You can use a bonus action to cause one creature in the aura, including you, to gain 2d6 hit points. Did you say Aura of Vitality? I understood about aura 50%. Aura of Vitality! Vi- vitality. 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 There you go. I thought the guy was going to sprout like a very thin mustache and talk about spaghetti. No, they were just going to eat a small meal of vittles. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're... Aura of vitality springs forth, and I assume you are using it to heal Charlie? Charlie, yeah. Right. It, was, it was a glowing aura, right? So he, like, lights up? It just says healing energy radiates from you in an aura. I guess visually I translate that as, like, yeah, yeah. golden light. Go ahead and roll your 2d6 uh, hit points to heal. Eight. Oh. 
Yeah, Charlie, uh, you know, stops rubbing her he- her ankle. I almost said heel. And says, oh, that feels much better. She, like, stomps around a little bit on it, walking yeah. around. You make sure you don't get a Charlie horse. Good one, Chip. High five. High five. My wife. You want to make sure you massage it before you go to bed or it might swell. Three plenty of water. <laughs> Do rice. You heard of Bengay? Bengay. Um... It's Dr. Barney. <laughs> it's Dr. Yeah, Barney. Uh, Dr. Barney. Are there, is, where's, we had like two trails of drag bodies. Yes. Has one of those ended I think it was Charlie? I think it was both feet of the goat. That's what I'm asking. Well, no, I'm asking like, is the trail still there? Are there two trails still? The trail has kind of come and gone. At this point, you don't see it anymore currently. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Charlie. Perhaps you could help us understand how we might be able to get to, I would assume there's a peak of the mountain would be the direction we want to head. Do you know with that, with that where that is? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Charlie points out a very difficult to see trail and says, head up in that direction. That That's where you want to go. Merci beaucoup. Can I roll a check at Charlie's chill? Can I roll for chill? Yeah, you're going to make a vibe check? Yeah, yeah, check a vibe, vibe check. check. We should have a vibe check. We call it a, a, an, an insight. <laughs> oh, okay. it, it literally is a roll. How's your insight? It's minus one. Okay. That's a six. <laughs> Charlie might be the most trustworthy yeah. person I've ever <laughs> met. Charlie seems super cool. Charlie! Hey! Hey, Charlie! Charlie! Hey. Where, where, where did Chocolate Factory at, huh? <laughs> you said you were looking for treasure, Charlie, right? Yes. Where Where are you headed to for that? Oh, I'm going to head deep into the mountain. Should we come with you? It's very treacherous for non-dwarves. Like, is that the size thing, or...? Oh, just the knowledge of mountaineering and uh. moving around through, uh, through mines. All right, so you're saying you don't want us to come with you? <laughs> No, hey. I appreciate the help, but uh, I travel faster on my own. Have you ever been to the Underglobula? Where is that are you from? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of gems down there. Lots of gems. You ever heard of, uh, what was that guy called? The... Aren't you looking for your wife, Mould? Listen, I'm trying to distract myself, all right? Very emotional. I'm trying to keep things light. Well, I don't want to hold you up. It yeah. sounds like you're uh, you're very busy looking looking for someone. Uh, Mateen just shuffles uh, Chip along and just like pushes him <laughs> up the trail. The Remember the kindness that we gave you today, Charlie. Thank you. I'll, I'll eat a goat over the campfire tonight no. in your honor. No, no, don't do that. No? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, everything's been for nothing. Charlie not. rising on the goat in our final boss battle. Yeah. yeah. Charlie and the goat. You still is just saying uh, March Rider, right? Chip Barney Matidelga? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you all continue up the path that Charlie pointed out. And uh, up the mountain, you hear the sound of rushing water. After some trial and error, you eventually unearth some loose rock in the mountainside that leads into an indoor waterfall of gurgling scarlet ichor. Gurgling and burgling. Scarlet? Yeah. So red goo. Yes. Out from the crimson waterfall emerges a horrendous horned creature made of swirling blood. You're even more foolish than I remember. You shall all drown in the vengeance of the Hemogoblin. <gasps> Well, I don't need to breathe, so that's not really that much of a threat. <laughs> uh, everyone roll initiative. I have advantage on initiative now. So. Oh, you do? Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a level up thing? But a little A showed up. I rolled a nine. I have a thing that gives advantage. I forgot to use it. Uh, mine's an 18. 23. I rolled an 18. What's your dex? You rolled an 18. Uh, my dex is 14. I'm 15. Cool. So chip first. Chip before Elga. Oh, it's your feral instinct. It's a, it's new at level seven. Your instincts are so honed, you have advantage on initiative rolls. Excellent. Additionally, if you're surprised at the beginning of combat and are incapacitated, you can act normally on your first turn, but only if you enter your rage before doing anything else on that turn. Oh, huh, good to know. And I'm going to roll initiative for the Hemogoblin. Feeling professor, I mean, uh, Inspector Weezer is in the Hemogoblin again this time. That'd be embarrassing. Twice getting hit caught by the Hemogoblin. So Hemogoblin will go between Elga and Barney. All right, uh, Matid, before you stands, or not stands, but before you uh, is the giant Hemogoblin laughing maniacally, threatening to drown you, which really doesn't, leaves it leaves you nonplussed. Listen, I spent an hour and a half in the ground. You cannot drown me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's have some fun. Let's party. Let's do this. You want to go nuts? Let's go nuts. Let's go nuts. Yeah, I'm going to get up on a biz- on his business. Man, I really wish how we defeated him last time. We will do it this time. I'm going to attack him with the Spear of the Spear Baker. Ooh. Just do a nice little, nice little attack. Roll for that attack. Ooh, that's only a 13. That hits. That, oh, it that does. Is, that is the exact number you need. Fantastic. 
Oh man, bad rolls. Seven is the damage. That is piercing damage, I assume? Yeah. Yeah. Magical piercing damage. Ooh. Ooh. I'll do it again. Why not? Ooh. Eleven. Oh, that is not enough. Oh, actually, wait. I forgot to do something with that last hit. I did a hit and did damage, so I can do a, uh, a stunning strike. Oh, yes. Why not? If it's there, use it. Stunning strike is when you hit with a melee weapon attack, you can spend a key point to make the target stun until the end of your next turn. If it fails, con saving throw of DC 14. And spoiler alert, I got another key point. Woo! I have seven. So uh, how many things could you do now? Well, the key points are the currency, but uh, my limits of actions and turns stays the same. Okay. Do you have, do you have a keychain? <laughs> That's pretty good. Probably got one. That's pretty good. So it's a DC 14, you say constitution saving throw? Yeah, why not? I've got a plus three, so I need an 11 or better. Okay. He rolled a one. <laughs> it's a one. That's a failure, which means the hemogoblin is stunned, which is a stunned creature is incapacitated, can't move and speak only falteringly. The creature automatically fails strength and dexterity saving throws and attacks against the creature have advantage. Okay, so then can I have my next attack at advantage? Yes. Okay, then I shall roll again. Is it only the next attack or? Until? The Kimogoblin will still be stunned. The stun lasts until the end of God. your next turn, Matisse. Ooh. Did you want the monk to stun your character at the top of the no, round? No, I've got a lot of immunities and I read it like four times and <laughs> stun is not in there. Uh, Von Cis, 26. That hits. Take nine magical piercing damage. <laughs> are we are we able to just kind of perceive if uh, what they're like open to attack to what they're vulnerable to? Are you, are you asking like, is there a check to see what a creature you're fighting is like? Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Check, I'm maybe? so sorry. Baldur's Gate. You can just like right click something and examine it, <laughs> and then it'll be like, oh, this person's like Gus, prone to this damage. Can, can Blaine right click the Hemogoblin? There is no right clicking, but you have encountered this creature before. So if you ask on your turn, I can probably give you a little bit of a good question. That's not bad. Good question. Do you remember when you got that note in your bum bag, Blaine? Yeah. Too, where it said, "I'm amongst the dead now." Yeah. It's a funny thing that I just remember. Because she's among, I mean, she's in Parish, right? Yeah. So that's like the dead people. In the in the Hagley. Anyway, sorry. Complete departure from no, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about Carol. That is exactly the kind of thing we should dive into and talk about on Second Wind. Okay, yes. That, that is a, a great, a great thing to theorize. Available for first members. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please Please become a first member and check out Second Wind. If you like the show, you need a bonus show. Or else. Or else. I'm going to round out this, uh, this fight with uh, just, uh, I'm going to use fur- Flurry of Blows. Almost said furry of blows. I did not write down that nine points of damage. I'm, let me make sure I get that in here. Well, yeah, we're getting, get ready to write down some more damage because we roll a 25. That is a hit. And that is nine magical feet damage. Show feet damage. Yep. Show feet damage. That's a nat 20, 27. Oh my. Okay, so it's a crit. That's a crit. I'm going to take a look at the damage you roll and I'll make sure it's modified for the way we do it. I rolled a 114, so take away one of the ones and put a six. Yeah, so then that is 11, 11 points of damage. And it's magical feet damage. Magical feet damage. It's very important for you to remember that. But it's like, uh, it's Talon. Yeah, Talon. Okay. Talon. Yeah. <laughs> Matisse working Sail. with them. <laughs> <laughs> I have talons. Matisse foot deep in I Talon. Have, I have many. Um, the most talented. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to, I'm just going to stay up in its business. All right. I believe that's 32 points of damage total from Matit there, if I'm counting that correctly. It is nothing. Matit nothing. there. That's a, that's a great start. It's true. It is nothing to the Hemogoblin. Chip, you're up. <laughs> he uh, has 550 hit points. Are they still oh. uh, prone or, or whatever? Stunned. 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 Yeah. Okay. Did you have some stuns? You. You. <laughs> you remember from your previous encounter. I'll, t- I'll tell you what. Make me a, let's call it a survival check. Survival check. You got it. That will you survive? It's a four. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be a lesson to all our listeners. Don't neglect your intelligence and wisdom uh, stats. I always do. I, you know, sometimes I do it intentionally because it's like, oh, that's a funny character trait. They're dumb. And then most of the time it's just like, no, I can't do the basic roles. I'm going to make a character next round that has zero physical abilities and is just a mind roaming around with you guys. Mm. <laughs> you need that. What does four get Blaine? You remember you fought this creature before. Ah, I knew it. Good job. Old foe. I uh, mean, he did say nice to see you again or something. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he? 
since they are stunned, I have the assassinate feat. You're going to use your feet too to fight? You have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in the combat yet, and any hit you score against a creature that is surprised by a critical hit. So they haven't taken a turn in combat, so I have the assassin thing. Correct. So I have a advantage. Correct. And you have advantage anyway because he's stuck. R uh, uh huh. Yeah. But he's going to use his advantage. Okay, not gotcha, mine. gotcha, gotcha, okay. gotcha, gotcha. So he's his own rogue. Well, no, like. <sighs> but also, on. I'm going to use the co patch for the Desert Storm. I feel. The Desert Storm of the Desert Tempest. Yeah. Da 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 da. <laughs> uh, Jet Kopesh. You gain a plus one bonus to attack rolls. You made this weapon on hit on a hit deals an additional one d four lightning damage. So I'm I'm hoping that the lightning damage does something. You know what they say? What happens when you hit a hebo goblin with lightning? <laughs> what well, does happen? Uh, uh, same thing as everything else. <laughs> God, awful writing. I love it. Oh 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 oh! I have sneak attack. Sorry, I'm just throwing all my things at you. Once per turn, you can deal an extra 4d6. He's, he's just going through his character sheet for you guys. 4d6 <laughs> damage to one creature you hit with an attack with a finesse or ranged weapon if you have advantage on the attack roll. So I get an additional 4d6 to what I'm about to roll. Correct. And that is an upgrade now that you're level 7. It was 3d6, I believe. It Ooh. just became 4d6 oh. now that you're level 7. Dang. Also, I would have had this anyways because Mateed's within 5 feet. So, I don't know. Whatever. Oh, let's just roll this. Let's get this bacon. Let's get let's get a roll on. <laughs> so that's a that's a that's a net one. So we're gonna roll that again. That's a eighteen critical. That fail. one critical fail. After all of that, yep. good job. I have advantage <laughs> <laughs> because Chip has advantage. Yeah, but Chip has advantage because of his own ability. So that ends up being an eighteen. Okay, so I'll roll for damage. What you roll? That's a four, but that's just for the slashing. <laughs> and then I get a one d four for the like lightning. So that's a four. And, and then where does the four D six come from? That's the that's the lightning damage. No, that's your sneak oh, attack oh, oh, damage. Oh, that's, sorry, yes, that's your sneak, sneak attack. Dice. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna roll that now. That is a series of bad numbers. Nine. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. There's Two ones. ones in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. That's, that's thirteen damage. And then you had to do another one. Uh. 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 I think that's everything. Uh. Yeah. Okay. We're so good at this. Well, then, in that case, We're so good at this. I will also use cunning action, and I'm gonna, cunning. I'm gonna, action. I'm gonna hide. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Are you moving away? Or just staying right up there. Um, I'm gonna hide. I'll, okay. I'll stay nearby. I this guess. thing had the thing where you made a loud noise and it would like spew blood at you. Is that that was the fountain though that had yes, that? Yes, that is correct. But I thought that's because it had the hemoglobin in it. Yeah, but that's how, since the hemoglobin was attacking through the fountain, that's the way it found you. Like, gotcha. it was like, you would make noise and it would attack at you. Oh, I forgot about that. Did that lightning damage do anything extra? Yeah, yeah it absolutely. Oh. Like, I got us. Straight face. Yes. Uh, Gus is always at advantage on persuasion checks <laughs> against Blaine. Do you want to roll stealth to go into hiding? Sure, roll it and I'll just make a note of it here for now. That's a 20 and a 16. We'll take, we'll take 20. the 20. I, I have advantage because of my sneakers. Yep. Roll me a perception check, Chip. Oh, yeah? That's a nat 20. There it is. Minus 119. Whoop, whoop. You see Carol. What? 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 Huh? Where? In the hemoglobin. Really? <gasps> what? Uh, okay. And you, you see Lewis in there, too. What? Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> like like the like Frost Giant? Yeah. The hemoglobin. It's got my wife. She's in there. And that other guy. Uh, did, did, did Weezer get hurt whenever we were attacking the Hemogoblin last time? Or was it like protected? I think I he was protected. I think he was fine. Yeah, after we like finished up, he like kind of came out and was like. Yeah. Uh, uh, Just like, hey, hey, gang. Like, let's not like stab too deep. All right. Because he might hit my wife. But that's all guy. I do. Get, aim for a limb that's not near my wife. <laughs> Are we able to see through the hemogoblin? It's like opaque. So it's like you can't constantly see Lewis and Carol. That's why I didn't say anything earlier. It's like they kind of like come up to the surface and then like, re you know, go back in. Do you Yellow. think it's yeah. like, like warm, like a, like being in the womb as a baby? Maybe. Maybe it's very comfortable for them. All right, so I did the high, but this is before I knew that that was in there. Otherwise I would have used a bonus action to maybe like try to reach in there and grab her out. But if that's too late, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's too late. Sorry. It's fine. 
<laughs> you look really b- b- shook enough about oh. that, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I'd said it earlier and I didn't plan it that way. Uh. <laughs> 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 we have fun here. <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> Oh. oh, Elga, you're up. After Elga's the Hemogoblin, then Barney. I'm such a big fan of playing Gibson. So only Chip saw that Carol and... Um, but he, he, he yelled it out. He screamed it out. My wife! Don't worry, Chip, I'll take care of it! Rage. <laughs> I would love to see Elga pull out just like a giant straw and like extend it. Yeah. <laughs> a telescoping straw. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to rage. Okay. Now, Elga would do it like a... Jedi Knight coming out and then bringing out their lightsaber. <laughs> just the straw. How far is the emo goblin from me? Not too far away. We'll say 20 feet. 20 feet. Okay. You're going to go play Wacka Carol? Don't you dare. I won't do that. I am going to run up to it, though. Okay. Right up on it. And then am I able to see Carol or, or Lewis in there? Make a perception check. Here's hoping. Nat 20, 24. Mm. Dang, two nat 20 perception checks. Yeah, you see them both kind of floating relatively near the surface. Okay. Her beauty shines through. <laughs> the most opaque of things. <laughs> the poetry ended. Some <laughs> giant size seven feet. Yeah. Could I go to swing to where I'm not going to hit them? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to use my great axe of gaining for that. And then go slice. And then is a 15? Uh, that hits. Okay. You slice. Oh, and you have advantage anyway. Roll that one more time oh. just to see if it crits. Okay. Yeah. That's it does chip. not crit. Okay but I rolled 12 points of damage. Okay. And then, oh, also when I raged, I took the form of the beast with the tail. All right, good to know. Tail twins. And then I'm going to do another attack. It's 14, but do I get advantage again? Yeah, you do still have advantage to roll that one more time. Okay. Oof, 12. Yeah, 14, 14 does it, so you're good. Okay. During 13 (laughs) points of damage. Like, oh, oh, wait, I get to add to- For rage. For both. So the first one would have been 14, and then this was 15. So it's another four points of damage total, right? Yeah. Okay. That's 13 on that one. <sighs> Rage for bonus, two attacks. You want to move anywhere? I I want to stay here, and I, I think it would be a bonus, but could I try to reach in to grab Carol, or would that be a so bonus? As, as, can it be a free action? It would free be action. a bonus, but well, let's, let's why not? Let's give it a shot. Okay. Go. I'm going to try to grab Carol. Make a, like a unarmed strike. But like, not too hard. Be gentle. Okay, I'll be very blood. gentle. 16. Oh, sorry, 26. Oh, man, that's really good. Yeah, I mean, you see both Lewis and Carol. Which one are you trying to grab? Carol. Okay, yeah. You reach in and grab Carol <laughs> and uh, make a... Play this first. Strength check. I'm going to do it opposed with the Hemogoblin, but I'm... I, I'm. Oh, wait, he automatically fails because of stun. Oh. Very well. Nice. Creature automatically fails, right? Yeah, I was going to give you advantage, but no, he's stunned, so uh, okay. he automatically fails that. Yeah. Just make a strength check just in general to see if you're able to pull her weight out. Uh, 14? You have advantage for duration. On strength checks? Yeah. Don't you? <laughs> you said it's so <laughs> convincing. <laughs> Don't well, you? a 14 would be the higher roll, so 14. Either way. Yeah, you're able to grab on and pull Carol out free from the Hemogoblin. Carol, I think. <laughs> right? Seem- she seems to be unconscious. Uh, Elga holds up Carol under the, like the armpits and goes, "Is this your wife? My Jim? wife! This is my wife! Be so so careful! She's so tiny. I know, but she's she's strong. How close was this to us casting the uh, whenever we healed? What's the the dwarf? The something How much time? Vitality? Yeah. Yeah. How much time has passed? Oh, uh, probably twenty minutes. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Cool. You have to climb up the trail always. And then since she's kind of covered in goo, I imagine. Could I kind of like slide her a little like away? <laughs> like a you bowling ball, like, her. A cur- like a curly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I don't want her to be too close. Luge. I'm gonna say no because you already had the extra okay, action to yeah, pull her you're out. True. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I got it. She looks kind of like Neo when he's removed from the Matrix. He's yeah. got all the goo on him. Yeah. Is she bald? I set her down just behind <laughs> me. If that's okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's it for Elga, I yeah. assume. It's the Hemogoblet's turn. Uh, who is stunned? Who did that? Look at that. I think he can still attack. Can he attack? They can attack when they're stunned? Oh, wait, does no, moving? I think so. They're incapacitated, move. which means they can't take actions or reactions. Ha <sighs> I hate you. I'm sorry. It looks like he's got a, like a like a kidney stone, you know, because Lewis is a big old rock ice guy. Got him. 
famous. Carol, are you sure this is the guy I you want to be with? Hi, honey. No legendary resistance to make you angry with? Gus is going to just start attaching that to every creature we fight. <laughs> All right, yeah. I mean, the Hemogoblin can't do anything. Barney, it's your turn. Then after Barney, we go back up to the top to Matid. Yeah, we'll say that the... Uh, oh, wait, no, it's that the... Can, can speak only faltering. The Hemogoblin goes... And it did not catch that. Could you say that again? I just, it's not quite coming through. Are you okay? I thought you spoke common. What is this? Yes. <laughs> Speak back to it in its native tongue, Mati. <laughs> Barney, you're up then after Barney. Go back up to the top of Mati. Nothing. Barney's going to um to do I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my I'm spiritual gonna. weapon as my bonus action. I cast that, and that'll make a, a spiritual weapon in the form of Barney's angry fist. <laughs> I think Gus said you couldn't do a fist. No, no, I couldn't do a whole cat is what we oh. yeah. <laughs> I You did the paw initially. I did a paw, uh, so I could do Barney's angry fist. Okay. And then that punches at uh, at, the, at the Pimo Goblin. Now, does this giant fist also have carpal tunnel? <laughs> or arthritis? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that's... Uh, I, sh- I, I shall roll for that. Wait, no, it would just get hit him without at advantage, right? Yes. Okay. This is like super mage hand. Mage fist. 18. Wait, what was, what was the first one? I already forgot. 17. <laughs> okay, 18. <laughs> it hits. I will roll for it. That does seven points of damage. All right. Nice. And, and then with my turn, I shall cast. Wait, can you cast again? You cast well, virtual I can weapon. use a cantrip, right? Yeah, you can use a cantrip. Yeah. So I'll, I'll use Toll the Dead. Ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> and that is. Two, oh wait, oh, I gotta roll to see if it attacks. I, mean, I already rolled my damage. It was 16. So I need to make a wisdom saving throw, DC 17. Mm-hmm. My wisdom is plus one, so I need a 16 or better. Mm-hmm. No, I fail on strength and dexterity. Not on wisdom. I rolled a 14, which is a 15. So that fails. Yeah, so that should do 2d12. I rolled 2d8 and rolled 16. I'm okay with just leaving it at that because that's. <laughs> I mean, that's. <laughs> Can you not? Well, I mean, I, no, no, I could re-roll it. I rolled. You do, do you do two d eight, not two d twelve? Right, because normally, if the creature is undamaged, it takes two d eight. But if the creature has taken damage, it takes two d twelve. He's gambling that he can't roll higher than sixteen Six. on two d twelve. Let him roll two d four to make up. No, two d twelve. No, 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 no that's not the way it works. I could yeah. roll like two ones. He doesn't get to pick. Yeah. So you're gonna stick with the sixteen? Yeah, I still feel like that's uh, because that's. Dance with the one you know. Yeah. It's still a. It's still more than half. Can we treat this like Lucky, where he could roll if you do roll it? Nah. No, no. I think I gotta go one way or the 16. other. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. I'll stick to the sixteen. Roll That's... me two d twelve. I just want to see yeah, what you okay. would have got. Yeah, I just yeah, want to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Just for, just just, the heck for of fun. It. Just for whatever's. Yeah. This is when the power goes out in the building. Nineteen. 19. Hey. You know, the, no, no, no. I, Chris's I committed. birthday was last week. He was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're sticking with 16. Yeah. You know, campaign one, Gus would have been like, it's okay. I understand. Now he's like, no, no. no I, we need to I, learn. I, I, we, we gotta I don't start, think so. We got we to gotta have rules. I rolled two, two eights. So I was like, that's pretty good for, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, the hemoglobin wipes the party. It was three eighths feet away from <laughs> dying. <laughs> <laughs> the end, the end of Stinky Dragon. Is that it for you, uh, that is the Barney? It. Okay, that is the end. That is the end. <laughs> All right, up next, we're back to the top with Matid. Then after Matid is Chip. Barney got the ick. <laughs> <laughs> Hemo Goblin is no longer stunned. At the end of your turn, so still stunned oh. through your turn. You should do it. You know, again. What? I'm gonna start agree with the comment section. Matid's broken. Yeah, so when you hit with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to make the target stunned until the end of your next turn if it feels a constitution saving throw. Same magnifique. Then I will use my bonus action to cast Arms of the Astral Self, and I can use my Spectral Arms to make unarmed strikes. Um, but what does happen is that it ha- I get to do a little uh, force damage as the arms protrude out. When you cast Arms of the Astral Self, each creature of your choice that you can see within 10 feet of you must succeed on a deck saving throw DC 14 or take 2d6 force damage. And I believe I automatically fail deck saving throws because of the stun status effect. That you do. All right. Ooh, that's a very good roll. 11. What kind of damage is that again? Force. Ugh. All right. Since I'm up on it, I will go ahead and continue to use the Spear of the Superior Baker, and I'll just hit it. That's a 15. I just love how you have that weapon. Roll it again, just because you have advantage. I forgot about that. That's a 23. Okay, yeah, you hit. I roll 10 magical damage. 
And, uh, let's, you know, let's just be fun. Let's make that a stunning strike again. It really shows, like, the evolution of the group, you know, now that we're facing them. Yeah. I said, I, 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 because they've been stunned and not being able to use my new abilities. So, DC Con 14. Con 14. My DC is, or my Con is plus three, so I need an 11 or better. Bum, bum, bum. Just stabbing this guy. Yeah. Big old spear. 19. So, I successfully made the save. Okay. I'm going to do another attack. Curses. Because that's what I do. Uh, I'm going to roll for advantage. That was a 23. That's a 24. Uh, that hits. That's 10 piercing damage. Ow. And that'll be it. Thank you. Well, that was a ton of damage. The hemoglobin is bloodied. What? Ha <laughs> ha. Get it? That's so... Yeah, uh, that's fair. What? Chip, you are up. Then after Chip is Elga. Okie dokie. And the uh, yeah. hemoglobin is no longer stunned. Oh. You didn't want to just do it again, Matit? I got to save some of my key points. Nah. Uh, Matit's still within five feet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still right there. Yeah. Melee damage. Okay. So then I have sneak attack still. Would they be surprised if I'm coming out of hiding to attack oh. them? Oh. Let me make uh, a check to see if I'm able to see where you are. Good question. Do I need to roll an opposing? Spell? You already rolled your sneak. You had a 20 on it? Yes. And I'm going to make my roll here. I told you I was writing it down. Look at you. Yeah, you are successfully hidden. Cool. Then I'm going to use uh, Schwing, the arm blade of Blurbling, who add advantage. I'm going to roll that. So that's a 16. And their advantage? 14. Yeah, because of the sneak. Oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah. 16. Yep, got it. We. I forgot. He makes his own advantage. And then I think that this. <laughs> he's, his, he's his own tiefling. That's a, that's a three for the, I think, piercing. And then I also get 1d4 acid damage. That's an additional two. Plus I get 46. 46? 4d6. Uh, oh. <laughs> 46. That was really Gus going, stop. For sneak attack. <laughs> that is, oh my God, so many points. Nine. You pop out of hiding and take your attacks against the hemogoblin using your arm blade of bur- blurbling. Mm-hmm. And you poke him in just the right spots to have him lose his shape and begin dissipating into the ground. How could I be defeated by such buffoons? This whole ploy was in vain. <laughs> so, yeah, the tornado of blood collapses. And- I just imagine Chip just running steps on his face to just get to Carol. Doesn't listen, jumps over Lewis, runs straight to Carol. Chip, Chip, are you, are you there? Chip, I saved your wife. I do a baseball slide in. I, I kind of like, sorry, kick Carol <laughs> out of the way and then just like catch Carol instead. <laughs> I said you're right. You kind of get kicked out of the way, Elga, but Lewis, you know, also came out from the Could hemoglobin behind you. I use my reaction? <laughs> my yeah. tail react? Go talk to Lewis! Okay, okay, okay. And you kind of stumble backwards onto Lewis. I kind of want Elga to oppose that, but we shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Carol, my sweet wife! Though her clothes are soaked in blood, Carol is ghastly white, her frail body gaunt with throbbing green veins. She looks up at you with a hollow face. <laughs> hey there, too. Chip, Chip <laughs> said, hey there. A weak smile comes across her face. You notice a sigil on her belt. Do I, uh, or does Chip recognize the sigil? Why don't you roll a wisdom check? That's a 19 minus one, 18. With a roll that high, I'll tell you that you don't recognize the sigil, but because you don't recognize it, that's why it sticks out to you. This is something older than the knowledge of clan sigils that you know. Ah. Oh. <coughs> You found me. I'm so sorry for everything. Well, it's up to you now, honey. Find Sheath. C- complete my m- mission. <coughs> I I love you, Chip. Her feeble hand reaches up to touch your face, but it falls to the ground and her body exhales one final breath. Gosh. Blaine, if you want to examine Carol and find out what happened, roll a medicine check on the next episode. Oh of Kelsey, my gosh. Are you kidding no, me? No, she can't be. Barney, get a healing spell! <laughs> Stat! My scroll of Revivify! <laughs> Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Uh, it, was a, it was an eventful between the tales. Yeah! I was in tears the, at the end of the last episode. I am also in tears at the end of this oh, episode. Oh, no! Are you crying?
intimidating. No. <laughs> yes, I'm in touch with my emotions. You're allowed. That's very healthy. Thank you. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. <sighs> Purple garble. <laughs> Stinky. This episode is brought to you by our first members who are pretty awesome. We got amazing little stinkers like Jin Collects, Orac 13, Rose 8, Wan Person 1, or Roll for Backflip 916. They all directly support the show. And if you didn't know, they get access to more content like Second Win. They get to be on our subscriber only Discord channels and attend our subscriber only events and so much more. Again, you can find that all at stinkydragonpod.com slash first. We can't thank you enough for your support that lets us make this very stinky show listeners who interact with us on social media and discord they had npcs named after them in this episode like charlie graves the weak ankle dwarf we got that from gosh golly graves on reddit additionally carol haney is voiced by laura rothamel at laura rothamel and hemogoblin the blood elemental is voiced by mikey spandex at mikey spandex 1992 the stinky dragon channel is managed by ben ernst this episode of tales from stinky dragon was produced by kai cook written and edited and composed by micah reisinger with additional editing work by david sonye head on over to stinkydragonpod.com slash first for all things stinky Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. I missed the fact that we didn't get to do a coffee cocktail because today I had a coffee experience that was very cool. I went to HEB and I became an adult because I used the coffee bean Mixer. The actual grinder? Yeah, I've never the done mix, that. No, the mixer, apparently. But it was like, that's something I've always seen adults do. <laughs> and, and I never, I was always afraid. It's a big, scary, loud right. machine. Big boy, B for blame, B for big boy. So I opened up a bag of beans, felt so wrong, poured it in. I'm an adult You did now. it before you purchased it? Yeah, that's what you said. Oh. <laughs> you ruined it. I had him. I, had him. <laughs> I, I realized it as soon as I said it. Oh. The audience, you couldn't hear this, but if you could, you would have you would have heard Blaine's soul leaving his body. <laughs>